Fuck. Afghanistan. The second lieutenant, Bertie Carr, just three weeks out of training, is in the teeth of battle. Mason! Mason! Under heavy enemy fire, his troop takes its first casualty. And back in England, 924 recruit troop, on the verge of being deployed to Afghanistan themselves, start their final exercises, the most realistic they will face before war itself. Having the firefights, and you looked at your watch, and two and a half hours had gone, yeah. and it felt like 10 minutes. Jaki, a British outpost held by the Royal Marines in the war-torn province of Helmand in Afghanistan. Any time, day or night, the Marines can come under attack by the Taliban, who hold much of the surrounding territory. Eleven troop, all trained commandos and therefore experts at infiltration, are preparing to venture deep behind enemy lines. This is to gain vital intelligence on Taliban positions prior to a major British offensive planned in the next few days. Tonight we're out on a recce to go and have a look at an enemy sentry position, um, which is in Kalawak, near Kalawak, which is a town up in the north. This enemy sentry position is just here and we're going to position an observation post just here, which is about 300 metres away, so we should get eyes on. We use thermal imaging to try and uh, pinpoint him and see what he's up to. Uh, they double up when dogs bark, that sort of thing. So um, it's, we don't know what he's guarding or what he's looking after. Uh, a weapons case. So you're just observing? This is observation, yeah. No, if we get into a contact, then we've uh, screwed up. Yeah. Well, I start thinking about what we're going to be doing tonight. We are going furthest north that this company has been. There is enemy out there, OK? It's been confirmed. So everybody in there, just take a thought aside. Start thinking about how you're going to do this. See now the recce party, we will be doing that. Jacko's gonna be behind us with the GPMG. Anyone comes into range, lads, they're getting smashed. Simple as. Everyone happy? Yeah. yeah. Kit on, let's go. Right, excited for this match, lads. Every time before we go on patrol, we uh, just fire the lads up just to make sure we know exactly what we're uh, doing out there. ACDC, Hell's Bells. Excellent. Lads, we get three section up the front, Charlie, front, Delta, rear. Whatever, it's not getting first aid, get The troop of 20 men undergo final checks. Fully ammunitioned up and body armoured, they must also carry first aid kits. First aid kits. Someone keep walking. These must be kept in exactly the same place on every man, so that in the event of someone being hit, others can locate his morphine and field dressings without delay. Yep, yeah, we'll like no yeah. What ammunition are you carrying, Joe? Got mags, itchy, FOSS, UGL bombs, and a bag full of link for killing. Okay. Right, I'll Session commanders, once you guys are good to go, let me know. Yeah, we'll do. Eleven troop walk into the freezing night and head directly for enemy territory on a reconnaissance patrol that could last till dawn. We've got all of our... Uh, 
six. Still two zero for this call sign. Leaving your location now. Over. At the commando training base at Limpston, only 11 recruits of the original 50 are still with 924 Troop. They are now practicing for the final commando tests that they must pass to win their Green Beret. Keep fast. One of the original survivors of the intake is ex plasterer and plumber James Williams. Williams, stop! Speaking to your dad on the phone, he said, I wonder just how fit you are now. And, you know, you don't notice it because you're with all the lads around you and you're all doing the same stuff. So you think that everyone's that fit. Come on, wait on. What, you know, what are they turning you into? Turning you into machines, aren't they? But you don't notice it because everyone around you is turning into a machine as well. But if you went back on Civvy Street, you'd be like a Superman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good effort, you two. Straight in the next tunnel and away you go. Good effort. Commanders have to attain what's called battle fitness, a physical and mental strength that equips them to operate in extreme conditions and often with injury. 924 Troop have already had to do the gruelling 12-mile yomp carrying 80 pounds, just a precursor to the commando test to come. It's all up there, 12 miler, you just get through it. Yeah. I was in a bad way on a 12 mile, really dehydrated, fell down a pothole, was hallucinating, but they installed that mental thing in you now that it doesn't matter. It does matter, you have to be physically fit, but it's a mental game as well. State of mind, isn't it? State of mind, yeah, that's, that's what they teach you here, and they can only teach you that here. With six weeks left, there are still no guarantees that any of the recruits will survive this gruelling training. But any who do will be sent straight out to join Bertie Carr's unit in Afghanistan, days after passing out. Right, the main state, mate. There's a lot more light than the other night, over. Just days before a major but highly secret British offensive against the Taliban, 11 troops are penetrating behind enemy lines in order to observe a suspected enemy firing position. Right, lads, they just had a sentry change at Kalawak. It's impossible to know if there are any enemy present. The Taliban thing about the Taliban is they come, they go, they pop up, they disappear. You just never know where they might be. They could be hiding anywhere. But with the big offensive planned over the next few days, it's important for them to know where the enemy might be. Sound of wild jackals out there. They're eerie. This is true commando stuff now. Very stealthy. Very secret. Very silent. Back in Britain, the recruits are now being taught the skills they'll need to survive in a war zone, including setting up a defensive camp known as a harbour. The first uh, tactical harbour. So it's protected uh, in terms of all-round defence. There's kind of sentries out each area in order that if, if we get attacked from any different area, then we're protected all around. Be two men. Just a quick attempt. And the lads go out and do what's called a recce patrol, an observation patrol, teaching them how to locate the enemy as silently and as quietly as possible, watching them, observing them, reporting back what they see. Commando warfare is so often about stealth. So here, the recruits have been tasked to crawl through the undergrowth and get as close as they can to an enemy without being seen. The enemy, in this case, are two eagle-eyed lookouts watching for any movements or suspicious signs. The left of H again. Yeah. All right, he's in there, mate. Oi, I'm going to give you a top tip, Jackson, OK? You're moving up a track that's going straight towards the OP, so what do you reckon they're going to see? See me. They're going to see you. Like a diagonal. Yep, either go diagonal or fucking make your, new, make your own track. Don't follow in the paths where others have gone. H, you just move forward to uh, the two trees on your left-hand side. Yeah, stop there, H, turn left. Go forward. OK, go slightly right. OK, go on and put a hand on head. Oh. Bit of a panic move there, wasn't <laughs> H, come forward. 
Yep. Barnes. Recruit Barnes pinged. Right, Barnes, what I've seen you off there is you're fucking kicking your heels up as you were crawling up this forward facing sword. Yep, yeah, Roger that, you've got him. Who's that? Jackson. Right, Jackson, remember what I told you about tracks, yep? Yeah? Five Jackson minutes ago, yep. Yeah. From down there, stand up, Jackson. Jackson, from up there, yep. Yeah, just looking on that track, is it just a mega dark? It's like, it's just like looking down a dark circle and you're coming along it, okay? So that's why you've been pinged. Of course, being pinged by the spotters amounts to being shot by the enemy. Well, yeah, it's a heat source. I mean, I can't tell if it's a person or not. It's stood still. In Afghanistan, the commandos are checking ahead with a thermal imaging telescope. The enemy, of course, could be anywhere. It's thermal imaging, so it picks up heat sources. A human body shows up very white, so you have to watch something for a while and see if it moves. Thermal imaging telescopes and electronic night sights. The commandos use them when they need to. But most of the time, they simply depend on their own eyes, an acute sense of hearing and teamwork. All are linked by radio. It's almost impossible to see. I can't get this infrared camera. But uh, with the naked eye, all I'm aware of are shadows. In fact, some of them are just a... It's difficult to know whether the shadows are commandos or... Just rocks. So you have to concentrate incredibly hard. Stay spaced out across this open ground, lads. Stay spaced out. For me, filming is a real challenge. My infrared camera that can see in the dark is proving to be a problem. It does not illuminate anything it films. To the naked eye, that remains completely black. But it does emit a small amount of light from the eyepiece. And although I've taped it up, leaving only a pinhole to see through, the tiny amount of light still escaping is not tactically safe enough for Bertie. The camera, there's a bright light. And uh, this next move is very exposed. I don't want to risk anything on this next move. Let's turn it off. One of the commandos lends me a military night sight that emits no light. And though unwieldy, I do my best to film through it as we get nearer to the enemy position we've come to observe. Now, able to film without giving our position away, I'm told we are as deep into enemy territory as the Marines have ever been. Okay, lads, what we're going to move into now is observation at night, OK? Far from the barren desert plains of Afghanistan, the recruits of 924 Troop are learning about night operations themselves. ...for a lot of it, because what do you think you need to use more at night? Eyes. Ears. Ears. So tonight, if I'm getting you to listen for a sound, OK, what you need to do is just open your mouth just slightly and turn <coughs> your head slightly as well towards the sound, OK? Cats do this a lot, apparently, and they're mega hoofing it here and stuff at night. OK? <laughs> What these recruits are learning about operating at night will stand them in good stead when they get to the front line. But for now, they have to observe only imaginary enemies. Come down this way. So what's going on? He's a rear sentry. So if anyone tries to sneak up on him from the rear, recruit waves the early warning. And he's got a bit of string that he pulls rapidly. He'll alert everyone there. There's enemies sneaking up from the rear. He'll open fire on them. Jump out of the OP. That was your return fire. Recruit Wade to smash the enemy. That's the plan. The recruits are spending the night in holes they've dug into the ground and camouflaged over the top. A typical ad hoc commando observation post, or OP. You uh, piss in a bottle, crap in a plastic bag, take it all the way with you in your Birkin. So they won't move from here for up to a week or two weeks at a time on operations. It's cold down here. How much sleep do you get? About an hour? Yeah, an hour's sleep, yeah. And then uh, from here, 
I'll go to sentry, then on to logger, then after another hour I'll go to observer, then after another hour I'm back to sleep again. This is the fun stuff now, yeah. The, the proper stuff, yeah. yeah. This is the sort of stuff you want to be doing. The more permanent dugouts are altogether more luxurious, but people always find something to complain about. In Afghanistan, Bertie and his men don't need observation posts in this particular operation. They're using the night and natural features for concealment. But otherwise, they're putting their training into dangerous practice. The Iraqi team have moved forward to get eyes on the objective. Over. The section have gone to regular target. I've just moved off about 30 seconds ago. The sentry is there now, uh, and uh, the target which he's at is about 300 metres that way, southwest of it. Normally, uh, negative is still only uh, one sentry up I'm right now. But... The forward observers got to within 100 metres of the enemy compound. Sure enough, an armed sentry was out and the compound was confirmed as an active firing position. This is invaluable information in the lead up to the attack against the Taliban planned for a few days' time. We're going to shift back to three sections. The, uh, the recce team has collapsed its position and moved back to the, the uh, compound, to the base, and uh, the fire support team, which is out with them, I think is uh, staying out till we've collapsed back, and they'll be the last ones in. Right, we've been given the order to head back now. We're going to shift back to three sections. Jacko, are you good to go? OK, here we go. On the way back, 11 troop check out a wadi, that's a dry riverbed, which the Marines may need as an escape route after the upcoming offensive. Message over. These armed Land Rovers are the Marines' mobile artillery. Called WIMIX, short for Weapon Mounted Installation Kit, they're designed for rapid response over rough ground. First. Armed with machine guns and powerful grenade launchers, they're going through some final weapons checks before the long-awaited attack on the Taliban, which is now planned for tomorrow. <laughs> Eleven troop, uh, they have a javelin pair, HMG pair... Bertie Carr, pair. leading eleven troop, will be part of this BBCP, attack. I intend to conduct a company raid onto the caves and shrine feature. This will increase the scale of shock that I'll inflict on the enemy and ensure that there is no loss in momentum. Once, uh, the plan is to launch a full-scale attack on a well-known enemy position called the shrine. Not actually a shrine, but a piece of high ground frequently used by the Taliban to fire on the British. ...from Kajaki Fob uh, and a raid onto the caves and shrine feature. This is in order to overwhelm the uh, enemy forces' decision-making cycle and their capacity to interdict uh, coalition operations. But even now, just 12 hours before the attack, the specific tactics are not made known to the individual troop commanders. Marty Collins, the company commander, will be adjusting his plans right up to the last moment, so Bertie and his 11 troop will just have to wait and see what their job will be. One thing is clear. This attack will be a company operation involving 100 men, helicopter cover and WIMIC support. But nobody knows what the enemy's strength might be. The enemy we've pitched up on his patch should hopefully have quite an enduring effect on him. Have a moment to think about it. I'll ask W02 Smith to just do time for us. 15.58 in two minutes. 15 seconds, time, 15.58, 5, 4, 3, 
two, one, mark. Now behind enemy lines, Bertie and his 11 troop are nearing the Taliban position to be observed. At the commando training base at Limpston, young men continue to be prepared for the front line. Oh. This time, if you're not against the wall, you just stood in the room, minding your own business. OK, you two, let's go. 924 troop, nearing their own deployment to Afghanistan, are now getting right down to the nitty-gritty. Practicing precisely the sort of day-to-day -day action they may well have to undertake once deployed. Room clearance and dealing with suspects. This bloke may or may not have just been shooting at you from 100, 200 metres away as you're approaching his building. He may or may not just about shot four your oppos. All right, that you don't know about because you've had to carry on with the flow of the attack and left them out there. You don't know what's going on when you enter this building. He may well be Mr. Innocent or Mr. Guilty. All right, whatever he is, he needs to be taken charge of straight away. Think about it. Get up. Up from. So you come in that room like that. Hands up! Hands up! Get against the wall! Turn against the wall! Get your head down! There you go! Whack! Done and dusted. Eliminated. Yeah, it's loud, it's fast, and it's quick. It's a little bit more aggressive. Come out! Come out, hands up! Get down! Where you go, you two, when you're ready? Behind them, behind them, behind them! Come on, come on! Go against the wall! Legs back, legs back! Go, 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 go! Get down on the floor, get down on the floor! Yeah, that's it. A bit mad, a bit mental, but it works, doesn't it? When are you passing out? Four weeks, all right? Four weeks' time, all right? And then five weeks' time, you could be anywhere, couldn't you? And if you were in my section or in my troop in a commando unit, point man away you go into that room, all right? And it could be you in five weeks' time, all right? And you go in there like a ball of fire. Bertie Carr has just received his final orders for tomorrow's assault on the shrine. Eleven troop have been given the most dangerous role. They are to be point troop. That means first into the attack. That's it's the hoofing task we've been given. We're point troop. We're point troop in a company group assault on this fucking feature which we've been receiving incoming from for the past two weeks. Bertie, so we only three and a half weeks out of training, is now about to lead his men, mostly rookies themselves, on their first deliberate action. They've already come under fire, but never before have they taken the attack to the enemy. You remain quiet and don't shine any lights, whatever, because we're completely exposed to the shrine and the cave complex. If they hit us here, we're pretty much fucked. I suggest we be there and ready to go at five o'clock. Revali and leave here. Step off at 0445. Just a last note. Guys, this is a fucking good op we've got for tomorrow. We've got the, the meatiest part of it. Uh, I don't want to see any fucking unprofessional attitudes, anything on the ground whatsoever, OK? Professional Marines will do the job properly. All right. Before dawn, and in sub-zero temperatures, Bertie Carr's troop starts to climb the steep slopes of the enemy stronghold, known as the Shrine. Yep, Jacko, move up to the base of the hill. Over. Not only are the Marines carrying up to 100 pounds per man, but they're doing so at altitude with much reduced oxygen. Eleven troop advance silently. Exposed. Communicating only through their personal headsets. All call signs stay low. Uh, we've got eyes on some possible uh, Taliban forces gone from that first compound. Observation posts on surrounding mountains using heat sensitive telescopes have confirmed that enemy are present on the shrine. Lads, when you're firm, go low. There's enemy out there. Right. Call Jackson, move up into Green One and uh, get into the ground. As the sun comes up over the mountains, just after five in the morning, Bertie's troop reaches their first objective, Green One, with no opposition. This is your alpha making the break in the first compound now. The enemy have withdrawn, but to where? No longer under the cover of darkness, the Marines advance to the top of the hill as they must try to command the high ground. Just be aware we are on the high ground to your left, over. Sully, you're completely skylining yourself there. 
can you not get into a better position? Over. Hello, Steel Zero Alpha. This is Steel Two Zero Alpha. Uh, can I push my section onto the shrine? Over. So far so good, but with no cover on top of the hill, this is a very dangerous place to be. Where is he? Right, get down into cover. Get down into cover. The Taliban, waiting after all, have opened up with a hail of fire. Right down, right down, yeah, good. We can tell the bullets are coming in close to our heads because of the ominous whistling sound they're making. The Marines call them lead wasps. Right, move round because they're manoeuvring round to that low ground. Lads, can you move round into this low ground? Because they're coming round. Move round, quickly get down low. Just get down to that low We're under heavy attack. Taliban are fighting back hard. We're pinned down now. On the ridge, it's on the shrine. I don't know what the strength of the enemy is. They've got us well pinned down. We've got tracer. Consolidated fire. That's a machine gun as well. Look down, down there. Right, mate. When you're done, you're going, mate. Right, we haven't secured the shrine yet, so we need to get away from there. Move. Chris, go, go, go. Run, run, run. Good effort. The incoming fire is so intense that Bertie gives the order to withdraw and regroup. Friendly! Right, lads, moving in. Friendly's moving in. Have you got eyes on the enemy? Negus, yeah, we've got our edge firmly down here, as this is a quite accurate fire. Cheers. Where's the fire coming from? That Over way. that way. That way. Right. I'll tell you what, that was fucking hoofing, whoever that is. That was a proper smash. Not being funny, lads, but we don't want to keep too many people in this hole at once. The essential thing is to launch a counter-attack as soon as possible, especially as the enemy have now given their position away. So to do that, Bertie leads his men around the hill to attack from a different direction. Oh, no. That's never before I realised the necessity for being completely fit, both in mind and body. We're going to carry on uh, with the advance. We're not going to get bogged down responding to every round shot at us up here. On Dartmoor, 924 Troop continue with the concluding exercise of their training called Final Thrust. Themselves just one step now from Afghanistan. Makes all the yomping worth it. Go through 20 hours of fucking sheer hell just to get here. <laughs> but yeah, it's worth it. You enjoy this? I love this bit. I love this bit. <laughs> Proper adrenaline rush. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how fucked you are. Nothing to eat, no sleep. Muster the energy from somewhere and have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's bleeding heavily from the leg. Okay, he's got gunshot wounds to the leg. He's bleeding heavily. He's going out of consciousness. What do you do? Start reassuring him. He's a casualty, yeah? yeah? He's just been fucking shot. Doing? Yeah, a bit poorly. <laughs> didn't realise how hard proper soldiering was. Commando level soldiering. How switched on you got to be. You've got an hour from when you get shot to get him to hospital. Just have it constantly ticking over in your brain. All the time, they know it. Yeah. You know? It's a way of thinking. It is a way of thinking. You know, it probably takes not just training, but general duties and a bit of experience to get that. OK, get someone else from two seconds. You're going to need to start thinking about evacuating yeah. him now, aren't you? On top of the shrine, 11 troop establish a firing line from which they take the fight back to the enemy. Yeah, go give him indication. Up on the right. Right. What? 11 troop has consolidated on the high ground above green one. We have good arcs onto the enemy positions, over. 
once Berta's men have suppressed enemy fire, they will make a move to Green 2, the objective from which they will launch yet another attack. Right, so they've got that enemy pinned down between them. Down below on the plain, the armed Land Rovers provide 11 troop with extra cover and try to pin down the Taliban in one place. Apex, boss! We've got Apex moving away from our position. There's eight, eight enemy sighted moving away from our position now. The firing then. The move is back behind us down to the low ground and then across to green two. Not yet. When the boss says the word, we're going to move on to green two as planned. Right. This is the sort of enemy you're dealing with. Ferocious, so courageous. In the rear yeah. just behind you. To our rear two section. We've got friendlies. And tactically aware. Okay, here we go. Go, get a car, go along. It's time to change the point of attack. The Marines, like the Taliban, need to keep moving to stay one step ahead of the enemy. Right, lads, staying in the low ground. Staying in the low ground, we're going to push on to Green 2. Last, last mile of two section. Okay. Two section. Six. The enemy could be hiding anywhere in the ruined compounds, which is why the order is given to fix bayonets. In your section, those you can, yeah? Roger. Right, when you're ready, call Sullivan, move off. Remember, stay in as much. We are in dead ground. If you hear a lead wasp, just keep low and follow me. Keep low, keep moving, and stay in as best cover as you can. All right, surround there. The commandos advance, running from cover to cover where they can find it. Shell holes made by their own artillery are often the only option. Right, remember, that's, uh, that's orange two down there. All right, that wall compound there. All right, so you're going to see Lima moving in there. Bertie has to establish a gun line fast, a position from which to put down consolidated and effective fire at an enemy clearly up for a fight. That's the gun line ahead of you, yep. and then as, as little left as you can to drop down the drop. Let me know as soon as you need Corporal Sullivan. Now, sit rep is, uh, we've been attacked from the west. Um, we had sit reps on enemy out to the west the whole time. We've really pissed them off now, haven't we? Right, lads, keep eyes on to the south. Kajaki, that's where all the fighting was yesterday. So as soon as they wake up. 11 troop make it to their second objective, Green 2, a well-known Taliban firing position. It's deserted. The enemy have melted into the landscape. This is still 2 zero Alpha, Green 2, clear, over. Uh, 2 zero Alpha, we've got uh, eyes on some packs, uh, possible uh, Taliban forces, and roughly Green. Bertie heads over the brow of the hill to join a forward firing line who spotted enemy fighters. It's now estimated that there are about 100 Taliban spread around the shrine. 11 troop comprise just 20 Marines. As we call forward to join Bertie, the enemy open fire again, and their AK 47s have found a new accuracy. Right, get down it. We are pinned down as the incoming bullets kick up the rock and the sand all around us. The forward firing line, exposed and outnumbered, is doing its best to provide cover as half their section make a break for dead ground. Stand by to move, Chris. Casualty! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. The news spreads that a Marine has been shot. No one is clear as to who it might be, but I've noticed that my own radio link to Bertie Carr has gone dead. Mate, the boss is still up there. Distant artillery fire mortars over the Marines' heads to establish a wall of smoke to cover the gun team withdrawal. Right, 
chance. Let's get a fucking move on. The troop sergeant runs in with a wounded Marine, Richard Mason. A single shot has shattered his wrist. He will now need to be evacuated to a hospital as soon as possible before he loses too much blood. This is called the golden hour, the most critical time when most battlefield casualties could die. And then I hear the crackle of my radio link to Bertie Carr as he comes back into range. Right, this is a Tuesday afternoon, back down to the shrine. This, uh, 11. False, down here. Right. Yes, sir. Have we got a gun team in? Right there. They're withdrawing back to here as well. There's a casualty in, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Yeah, I saw it. I thought we'd been hit in the chest. That fucking grim. I ran over. Just over there. No, they're, they're from fucking uh, China around to Kalawak now. On the other side of the wadi. So our extraction across the wadi is going to be fucking interesting. The gun team's coming in, lads! So, Major, is that gun team OK? Yeah, gun team OK, yeah? Straight down that way, down that way. Some enemy have fled and the rest are taking cover from the continuous barrage that had been unleashed by 11 troop and has now been continued by 10 troop down on the plain. An Apache attack helicopter has been called in. Is that friendly? Yeah. Just the warning. No, I need the uh, final point for the mortars. I'm engaging with the mortars. Eleven troop remains in cover whilst the helicopters attack. How are the lads doing? Yeah, good, good. I think they're uh, having a good time. They've uh, all managed to uh, get some rounds down, and uh, it was good suppressive fire that they gave to extract off that flank there, off the top of the feature. So that was a pretty hairy situation, but uh, it was a good effort. So what's next? We're going to cross back across the wadi and uh, assault Kalawak, which is a known sort of enemy they town. Were, they were smoking out the um, um, withdrawal of the casualty, mate. And uh, we're point troop, because we know the route. Yeah, should be a good little, little expedition. Yeah. Using all the dead ground. Fish, lead off. Oh, <laughs> so we are now heading back to the very compounds we were secretly observing just a few nights ago. We've been across the wadi now. They've uh, dropped smoke to our left to cover our cover us as we move towards this compound, uh, which uh, we have to take and explore. It's known to be an enemy compound, an enemy village. Whether they're still there or not, we don't know. Back at Limston, the recruits of 924 Troop continue their final exercise practicing exactly the room clearance drills they will have to execute in Afghanistan in just a matter of weeks. On me, all of you! Get here! Hold on! Pull my leg! Yeah. Room clear, we'll let him do it! Nice and aggressive drills from all the lads. Grenading each room and tripping off all the trip flares. Enemy in the corner, all right. Two miles of flesh. Yeah, <laughs> Stop firing, Smoke, you can't see nothing. Good call, Sparks, well done! Majority of the troop, yeah, they've proved themselves. They did really, really well, actually, in the attack, and as a whole, through the exercise, they've proved themselves through some horrendous weather, through sleet, rain, snow, yeah. gusty winds, up to sort of 80, 90 miles an hour in the middle of Tours and Dartmoor, yeah. and then still been able to fight at the end of it, which is what it's all about. Yeah. And if they can do that here in the UK, then you can pretty much do it, do it anywhere in the world. <laughs> And it could be in theatre in Afghanistan, so that's the last attack they'll ever do. The next time it'll be live in a, in a war zone for real. So yeah, this is basically their test exercise to show that they can go on to uh, operations. You're number one, you move first. That was absolutely atrocious. 
fucking go and bomb up, we're going to go through it again. I suggest, fellas, you start switching on, otherwise it's going to be a very long day to Hurry up! Get moving! There's a little saying that you keep saying in your head. I'm up, I'm moving, he's seen me down. Three seconds is that it takes to say it in your head. Three to five, stay alive. If you're going any further than five metres, you're going to become a casualty, guaranteed. All right? Bertie and his troop arrive at the deserted town of Kalawak, one of the main firing positions the Taliban used in this morning's action. Bertie must now move through its scattered compounds to search them and clear them. It's still morning. It's only quarter past 11. Jesus. Nice day for it, anyway. The compounds are surrounded by thick mud walls, and sometimes the only way through them is to blast a hole with dynamite. Bar mine, lads, keep your heads down. Bar mine. Beefing. Good, start clearing it over there. Cool signs, this is still 2 zero Alpha. Be aware, we are blowing a bar mine to break into a compound to the north of our LOE. Over. Jeez. Salt team two. Where's this mine? Mine's kit. Batteries and bits of clocks. Right, just don't touch any of that shit. Okay, Finders, next door on the left. Go. Eleven troop moved through Kalawak methodically. The enemy seems to have fled, leaving behind bomb making equipment, Russian ordnance, and some ancient weaponry. When there are no bar mines to get through walls, the largest marine in the troop, Tom Curry, Known to everyone as Vinders, does the job just as well. Right, straight left, yeah? <laughs> straight left as soon as it's done. Get left for Vinders. Out we go, left corners. Two right. <laughs> go tap. <laughs> it's not like down in the dip having to go. That's a grenade. All cool signs, all cool signs for that. This is 2 Alpha, that was a grenade being used to clear an underground cavern. Over. It's like the Alamo, this, isn't it? Oh, section, they're now going to move out of this compound and Up to this point, nobody knows where the surviving enemy are. But then HQ sent through a message saying they've intercepted a frantic Taliban exchange on their radio frequency. We are low on rounds, we are withdrawing. <laughs> listen, listen, lads. This is going to tear up. The Taliban are very impressed with the British fight. They are low on rounds and are withdrawing. J Jen. <laughs> right, lads, stay alert for the route back. Don't rap on it. Stay alert, because they may still hit us. Out. Lads. Do you have to get your feet wet? Get your feet wet. It's better than getting shot. Out. Bertie leads us back in the direction of the base, using the wadi wrecked a few nights ago in the night surveillance operation. A day, and I was withdrawing <coughs> to the wadi, and that final bid to get back to, to base. No, uh, no fatalities, thank God. One injury. Uh, otherwise, a successful day all round. But I speak too soon. Despite what the Taliban said, there are still pockets of resistance which other Marines are attending to. At one point, we walk straight into a firefight with the bullets winging over our heads. We have two tanks moving in the alleyway about 200 metres to our front. Over. Lads, they've got two packs in that area where you just recce, moving in the alleyway. Oh. Hold on, they're firing above us. Let's extract out. This could turn nasty. We extract that down to. Uh, Stay in cover, lads. Stay in cover. They're firing over the top of us. <coughs> Keep bent down. down. Peel from the front, no, Jay, move. Uh, Peel down. Straight back down, mate. <laughs> Don't know. Still there, just to make you aware that uh, USPI call signs will be uh, going across the OP-13 and OP-14. Yep. 
Maybe up to 20 Taliban have been killed today. It's impossible to know exactly as fellow fighters whisk away bodies almost immediately. By early evening, Bertie, after his first direct action, counts his men into a temporary shelter for a ration break. Just another day in the life of Bertie Khan. <laughs> I don't know about that. That was a pretty special day for me. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. What will your family think about this, Bertie? Are you going to tell them? <laughs> no, <laughs> not going to tell them until I get back, I think. Uh, it saves them uh, just worrying. Because if you tell them that you've done something like that, they'll think it happens every day. And, and it doesn't. It's not every day something like that happens. It was quite hairy up on the top. All Marine Mason got shot in the arm. But with the good drills that the lads did, you know, return fire, suppress the enemy. No one else was hurt, which um, well, it's part miracle, but part mainly uh, just good drills on their part. And it was great to have a troop which reacts like that to uh, set enemy fire. And a uh, good day for the Royal Marines, yeah, definitely. Next time, 924 troop pass out as Marines, and some prepare for their first deployment to Afghanistan. And Tom Curry, the biggest Marine in Bertie Carr's troop, makes the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, Tom was the first into the attack and uh, was killed very early on. 